thought the first ever civic constitutions produced, got created, called Medina Constitution or Medina Treaty. Where in Medina Treaty, the longest chapter was about guaranteeing the right of the minority. And among those who were minorities in Medina at the time, of course, are the Jewish uh, communities. We know from the history that Muslims and Jews have had honeymoons in Spain, and then I just read recently that when the Holocaust took place, Muslims in Albania helped a lot the Jewish, the Jewish people to, to flee uh, these um, uh, killings. Unfortunately, circumstances change, and a lot of attempts to make to, to make this dialogue continued and and um, um, preserved, but unfortunately, uh, always hijacked and overshadowed by different circumstances and particularly uh, outsider factors. But I would like to brief with this. Muslims and Jews basically are the most identical people. As Rabbi mentioned, not only in terms of faith, but also in terms of faith, in terms of destiny. And so let me mention several points why we have to have this cooperation and dialogue. Number one, because our holy books teach us to have dialogue with other people. Look at the music. Different tools, different instruments, but they can cooperate. And it produces beautiful sounds, beautiful music. And I think we are here this evening to take, not to agree on every single issue. But it, we operate in condemning terrorism because we believe that human life is human life. It doesn't matter if it's Jewish being killed or Muslims being killed, Palestinian, Israelis, it doesn't matter. Life is sacred and we must value the human's life. No one has the right to take the human's life except the one who created them. Besides all these, and we have some more points basically to mention, there are also some obstacles that I have to mention between us. And we have to be realistic, and we have to be honest and frank in time to mention those, those obstacles that we have in our ways. The first one is abused, abused understanding of our text. I know in our Jewish friends you have the concept of chosenness. In the concept of Muslims, we have several verses of the Holy Quran that we are challenged and we challenge ourselves to understand it based on the contextual understanding of those verses of the Holy Quran. And just recently, some friends at Hunter College didn't want to have dialogue with the Jewish Muslim St Jewish Student Association because they say we will never be together. Until the day of judgment, Muslims and Jews will never will ever be enemies. This is an abuse understanding of our text. And we are challenged, and we challenge ourselves for that. Secondly, the media, I think Professor mentioned about this, that many things mentioned in the media basically are those what I call sensational news. It is very rare we find that I and Max and I sit together to cooperate, to find peace. But if some Muslims curse a Jew, or any Jewish curse the Muslims, then you will see the media tomorrow talk about those issues. This is about sensational news. But the last point, of course, there is a very important issue between us. It is a matter of faith in the Jewish tradition. It is a matter of faith in the Muslim tradition. We have the Middle East, East, East uh, such situation issues. And we have, here's the challenge, let's go to angle this, Professor. The challenge is, how do we perceive our religions? Do we perceive our religions as the cause of problems, or can we use our religions as a means to finding solutions? It's a challenge to both of us. Thank you. I do have a series of questions our audience has already submitted. I'd like to start giving you a chance, however, to answer a pair of questions. One question is, what is it that is the most frequently asked question that you get when you're in the other's house of worship or interact with the other religion? What is the most frequently asked question that you get? The most 
frequently asked question, to be quite blunt, is, Rabbi, will you be safe going to the mosque? <laughs> and will your congregation be safe going to the mosque? And when I refer to the mosque, we are in the company of not only one of the great spiritual leaders of Islam, but Imam Shamsi Ali is the spiritual leader of the mosque on East 96th Street, which is referred to as the Great Mosque of New York. And I remember the very first time that we had an exchange program with the New York Synagogue. It took some very serious convincing on my part in terms of sensitizing our congregation that we were going into a house of worship that is warm, that is welcoming, that is a member of our extended family. After all, as Jews and Muslims, we are family. We've had a few family disagreements, but we're still family. And uh, that, quite frankly, is um, a question that I'm asked. It's a very disturbing question for me to, to hear and have to respond to. But that has been the challenge of our work. Three years later, since we first initi initiated this exchange between the New York Synagogue and the Great Mosque, the congregation is very comfortable. You know, Rabbi, when can we go back to the mosque? Or how often we've had the great honor, privilege, and welcoming the congregation of the mosque. Uh, to our setup. So we need to help those, and that's why this evening, this evening is so important because we tend to demonize others, we tend to generalize the other. In a Muslim state, but basically violating the principle of Islamic teachings. There's no freedom, there's no justice, there's no equality, there is no tolerance, etc., etc. So I used to say, that there's Muslims living in America right now. In fact, America, in many Islamic criteria, more Islamic than many Muslim states, to be honest with you. And so, you know, if, if any Muslims declare that they are Muslim state, you don't have to be over worried, because we, at the time, when all issues are settled based on sincerity and sacrifices, it needs sacrifices. Ego doesn't serve the purpose. It needs some sacrifices from the Israeli side and from the Palestinian side. And I think this is the only way compromistic nature or attitude must be put on the table as, as a path to the peace. We um, anticipated the question that's meant for you, Rabbi Schneier, so I, I'll so read it anyway to complete the cycle here. I am a Muslim committed to peace and nonviolence. And surely some of my fellow Muslims are causes of the problem with their violence and terrorism. However, isn't the current Israeli government's rejection of a Palestinian state and the Arab initiative that you just mentioned, and continuing to build Jewish settlements, limit the possibility of such a Palestinian state? Can't we legitimately <coughs> criticize the Israelis as well? Fair question. I, for one, believe that we will see an end to this conflict, and that we're living in some extraordinary times. I believe that the current 